This is always our favorite part, getting to get all our stuff ready while everybody just looks at us. <laughs> Thank you guys. We are Lindley Creek, and for those of you who have not met us before or forgot who we are, that's okay. We understand. <laughs> we sing in front of like way too many people to remember a year, and it's not that we don't want to, but it's so many people sometimes. <laughs> so I'll enter. Here's the deal. I'll introduce us to you if you'll introduce you to us. Does that work out for you? Yeah. We won't do that thing where everybody just shouts their name all at once because it's. It's hard to take in, but anyway, over here playing the guitar is my mom, Kathy. Standing next to her playing the mandolin is my little sister, Katie. Over here on the upright bass is my dad, John Rob. My name is Jace. That makes us Lindley Creek. And we are here for two reasons this morning. First of all, we're here to praise and worship God together as a Christian family. And second of all, we're here to have a good time. And those things are not exclusive of one another. In fact, I think they have to be joined together. Because as Christians, we ought to find our joy in the Lord. So if we're in this house without any joy, in the Lord's house, 
the source of our joy without any joy, are we really here? I don't think so. We're going to sing songs this morning about God's mercy, His grace, His deliverance. We just sang a song about He knows all of our struggles. And I don't think we should sing or hear songs like that with this look on our face. <laughs> I just don't think so. So anyway, I want to give you guys permission, because sometimes people are scared to worship in front of us. Well, we're just trying to not mess up, so don't worry. We're not thinking about you. We are, but we're not looking at you that carefully. So I want you guys to just feel free. If you want to clap your hands, go for it. If you want to stomp your feet, knock yourself out. If you want to sing along, try to get in the right key first. If you can. If you can't, we know you tried, and that's what matters. But anyway, let's all just pray and worship the Lord together this morning. What do you say? Amen. Let's do it.
So anyway, we're going to sing this song now. One thing we like to do, we, you've noticed, we've sang some hymn songs, we've sang some new songs. What we like to do is just take songs and change them. That's the main thing we like to do. We like to confuse people because they're like, I think I know this song, but why is it different? It's because we're doing it. That's the whole thing. But our whole, whole idea is there are so many great old songs and there are so many great new songs that neither one of them should be ignored. And this is a great hymn song. It's been one of my favorites for a long time. It talks about one of the most central themes to being a Christian, and that is not reliance on ourselves, but reliance on God. Right. And you know, it's really hard living in the United States of America because our main God is self-reliance. And all we want to do is just do everything ourselves, figure everything out ourselves. And this well, current culture has not helped that much because we literally have the world's knowledge at our fingertips. But we usually play games with birds instead, but you know, <laughs> you know, we have the tool there. But you know, sometimes there are things that we cannot handle. In fact, all the times there are things we can't handle. And it's whether we fool ourselves into believing we can figure it out or not. But the truth is, when problems happen, when things happen that Google doesn't have an answer for, there's no one we ought to go to but God. Amen. Sometimes we're tempted to go to a friend, we're tempted to go to this person or that person, but there is no wisdom like God's wisdom. And the world does not even come close to possessing it. So just a great encouraging song about where could I go but to the Lord. One, two, three, four.
You're doing great. <laughs> great man. What'd you say? Don't forget the offer. All right. All right, I'm getting all these getting all these instructions up here, and I ain't sure what any of it means. I'm getting bits and pieces. I gotta figure out what song we're doing next. Next song on the list. The next song on the list. He said, "All right, I just now can see it." Bifocals are a wonderful things, so you need to see something. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. So somebody else will wear these for a while. It might help me. But anyway, we're gonna do one of our favorite songs. We've sung this song here several times. We've sung this song just about everywhere we went. But you know, sometimes if it's a really good song, you ought to just re-sing it. That's right. And uh, and I want to say this: we sing we sing a lot of churches. We sing a lot of outside church events too. And sometimes we'll get a song that we do, and after you've sung that song for a year or two, you're just tired of it because it's you're just tired of it. But if the song really says something. You don't get tired of it. And I'll just give you an example. How many of you are tired of singing Amazing Grace? You know, that's one of the songs you just think about it once in a while. And, and if you really think about that song when you're singing it, it ought to just about bring a tear to your eye. If you've sung it a hundred times that day, it ought to get you. Well, this song that we're getting ready to do is kind of that away. Now, Jace is going to put on a different fiddle. He's getting his viola out, and it's the low strung, got that low rumbly sound, sounds like a cello, so it's going to sound totally different on this song. Katie's going to sing the song. But what I want you to notice is, is what this song talks about. The Bible tells us that one of these days, Christ is coming back. Amen. And when he does, the Bible says, the dead in Christ shall rise yes. first. That's right. Now think about that with me for just a minute. When he comes back, the dead in Christ, the ones that are dead in the ground, they're going to rise first. Now can you imagine being in a cemetery when that time comes? Now these are the kind of things I think about when I'm staring out the windshield of that bus. You understand what I'm saying. You got all day to drive, you used to driving down the road looking out the window, and I get to thinking about this kind of stuff. Everybody else is in the back playing their Angry Birds game, Jason's is talking about. And I get excited about some of this kind of stuff. But I'd like to be in that cemetery when that happens. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. I think the ground's going to rumble a little bit, and all at once they're going to split open. And you may say, well, that ain't how it's going to happen. This is my imagination. This is how it's going to happen. You have your own imagination, and when we get to heaven, if you're going, we'll discuss who was right. All right? Between now and then, we'll just both be right. How's that? And that's okay, by the way. I'll throw that out there. But anyhow, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and then those that are alive remain should be caught up with him for in the air. So you're in this cemetery. The ground starts trembling. Everybody, all these bodies go flying up out of there, and then I'm going to take off running and jump and never touch the ground. Just be snatched up with him. You think about that once in a while. That's, people say, well, that's silly. Okay, man. Okay, so I have silly imagination. So what do you have? Maybe you don't have any, and you could use some silly. I don't know. I can't explain that for you. But the reality of it is, what this song talks about is, just like Jesus couldn't stay in a grave, someday, folks, we ain't going to stay in a grave either. That's right. So that's, I hope you enjoy this song. All right, Katie. Love you, Ain't no grave Ain't no grave oh, yeah. I said I said Yeah. 
maybe it's kids maybe someday you want to get your driver's license but you're really dreading the test part of it you know what i'm talking about and but sometimes you get there and it's not that bad of a deal you just have it blown up to this huge thing in your mind sometimes talking to someone about jesus is that it's the big scary thing and you know you need to but you're afraid you're going to mess it up aren't we we're afraid of that well you know if you really break it down being worried about messing up that for someone else takes it into my hands and it takes it out of the holy spirit's hands so if we can just be kind to people be actually interested in their lives talk to them we'll get an opportunity to share the gospel and uh, so i wrote this song while we were at the conference and it's called open the door and god is powerful enough to save we just need to open the door so people can get a glimpse of him and his goodness and his love for us. And I hope this song encourages you to not be scared, but to be brave.
Since we were here last time, we have added a group to a group, a member to our group. There you, go. you know how sometimes your brain gets ahead of what you're saying, and then your mouth just jumps ahead to where your brain is. Sunday mornings, guys. I'm telling you, brain does not work. But anyway, we have added a new member to our group. And I would like to introduce her. This is my wife. She's sitting back here. Her name is Caroline. And, uh, yeah. and if you're not sure which one she is, she's just the sweetest, prettiest one out there. So that's how you can tell. But uh, anyway, um, man, guys, being married is awesome. And also, here's how much my wife loves me. She loves me so much that she will go fishing with me. And... I, let me tell you something. I'm not one of these fishermen that just like kind of sits around and fishes. Yeah, that's like I am casual. a very active fisher. It's a context. <laughs> I don't really know how to halfway do things, so or even just all the way do them. I go way too too far sometimes. So she helps me remember that sometimes, which is very helpful. Thank you. But um, anyway, I love to go fishing with her and. Yeah, the funny thing about it is, she's like better than me at fishing, yep. which is awesome. I love that because I needed someone better than me to go fishing <laughs> with. Like that is helpful. But uh, so we were up in Canada for a long time this summer, back when we were still just engaged. We were engaged forever, it feels like, but that was because our wedding got postponed. But anyway, she, oh man, You're on Sunday you mornings. Mean? She is from Canada, actually, and visas take a long time. So anyway, you need me to tell this. No, nope, that's all right. I got it now. We're back. We're back. So anyway, we were fishing this morning, and we were fishing with big old spoons. We were fishing up in Canada for northern pike. She had never caught one. She really wanted to catch one. So we moved locations. First cast, she casts out there. I cast out. I look over. Her rod is just doubled over. And the water's really clear, and I can see out, and I see this fish. It just look, it looks like it's as long as one of these whole rows of chairs to me. I mean, because water does that to things. Just look giant. So I didn't even reel in my cast. I just set my rod down because I was like, I need to pay attention to this. Well, we end up getting the fish in. It was 34 inches long. It weighed 11 pounds. It was literally as big as my leg, like from here to my shoe. That's how long this fish was. And it was just awesome. I was so, some have said, I was so excited that I was visibly shaking. <laughs> and it's true, I was. I was so excited. And you know, so we were fishing in the middle of town because, well, I'm from Missouri, so when I pass water, I think, hmm, are there fish in there? <laughs> oh, everybody, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, we all struggle with chains that bind us up. And sometimes there are chains that have been put on us, sometimes there are chains that we put on ourselves. But you know, God wants to break all those chains for us. But the devil wants us to get real cozy in them. He wants us to wrap around him, and he wants us to believe lies like, I'll never overcome this addiction. I can't ever be that type of person. I'll never have victory over this. But you know, it's just not true. That's right. Sometimes we've spent so long trying to struggle with these chains ourselves that we've convinced ourselves that we can't break these chains. And the truth is, can. you can't. Right. But there is no chain that is too strong for God. And when we get those chains broken in our life, we can go to others, and we don't have to yell at them for having wrong political views, if that's a thing. We don't have to look at them sideways because they live differently than us. We can just say, why don't I show you some hope? Why don't I show you what God did for me? And why don't I just introduce you to the chain break? Well, I want to know what you're That was me. <laughs> if you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lie, and if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. Yeah, a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need freedom or saving He's a prison shaking savior If you got shame He's a 
chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. And you know, I think that's what ought to set us apart as Christians. Um, I don't know how many of you have ever heard that abbreviation, that joy is Jesus and others and then you. And it's such a simple thing. And sometimes as we get older, we start to think, ha, 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 some, some silly little thing that I learned way back in grade school. But, you know, there is such great truth to that. And as Christians, we are really the only ones capable of having pure joy. Right. And putting our focus in those places. And it has just been a blessing to see that joy here this morning. And you know, it's one of those things that can't really be counterfeited. You know the joy of the Lord when you see it. And that is our strength, isn't it? The joy of the Lord is our strength. And you know, when people walk in here, they ought to see something. They ought to see some people that are strong, not in their own strength. Amen. Some people that are happy, not because everything's going perfect, but people relying on God. And it's just been a blessing for us all to see that this morning. And sadly, we see that in about 10% of the churches we're in. So it, is just, it has been a blessing. And I want you guys to know that uh, you've got something real here. And people can't help but notice that. Amen. And we have our brand new CD. We have been waiting on this CD for years. Three years. Literally three years. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not even a joke. It was lit a literal three years. Because we did not want to just do what we've always done. 
we decided it was time to be super duper serious about our CD. So we went to Nashville and we hired a producer. And the reason that we wanted to do this CD is so that we could reach a larger audience. And the reason that we wanted to reach a larger audience was so we could all get rich and famous. Yeah. It's really working. working. And it's working so great. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not why we wanted to do that at all. We wanted to do that so our light could shine in front of as many people as possible. Because that's what we are called to do. We have been called to bring God's word to people wherever they are. And it is so great. We love to be in churches. But a friend of ours has said before, if we are salt and light in a church full of salt and light, is that helping anybody? And it is. It's helping the fellow saints. And that is great and that is so important. And a big part of what we do is encouragement. And if someone who doesn't know God walks in, it's great. But we are called to be salt and light to the world. And not all the world walks in the church doors. So we feel like it is our mission to be not always just in church. We want to be out in the world and let them see the difference in us. You know, here we have four people that are all related to each other. They can still speak to one another and seem to get along and enjoy life together. That's different, isn't it? And I can't tell you how many conversations we've had with people on that subject. And so this, this CD that we have, not all of the songs are strictly gospel. Now, none of the songs are going to have messages that are counter to the Bible. They're not anything bad. They're all family friendly because we will always be that. But there's also a gospel song on there. And there's also the opportunity for us to get out in front of people and share with them the love of Christ. And that is what we feel called to do. And that is why we went to Nashville. We hired a producer. We spent more money than we had <laughs> or knew we could twice. obtain twice yeah, <laughs> to make this album is because we want to reach the world. And I just want to say, like, if you don't listen to um, non-gospel music, we will not hold that against you at all. Our, here's, here's our test here. If you don't want our new CD, don't buy it. There you go. That's the whole thing. <laughs> but we would ask for your prayers because we are right now in talks with a record label hoping to get distribution out so that we can go out and reach the world because that's what we feel called to do. And I just would like your guys' prayers with us on that. We would really appreciate that. And we do have that album back there. And uh, that helps support us going out and doing things when we sell those albums. So anyway, we have that brand new CD. And the quality on it is much different than the rest of our albums. <laughs> it makes a big difference when somebody else is there that's not in the band that can tell you you're doing wrong because then you have to listen to them. Because <laughs> you're paying them and like, what? Why wouldn't I listen? But anyway, so we've got that back there. Katie, why don't you tell them about the fancy dancy thing that we're storing these CDs in? Yes. So if you guys, when you go back to the lobby, foyer, 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 uh -huh. foyer. <laughs> 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 <Very> fancy. <laughs> Anyways, when you go back to where the tables are, if you guys will notice the thing that is holding all of our CDs and T-shirts. It is, um, it's an old trunk that I found at a flea market for $20, and I tore out all of the old contact paper and repurposed it and turned it into our display case. And, believe it or not, not everybody in this band was on board with that idea. <laughs> and I'm not going to say any names, but my dad was not on board with that idea. <laughs> So yeah, if you guys want to go back there and look at it and then tell my dad how much you love it. I thought it was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's why you're my favorite. Yes. It should have been you. set on fire in Canada. We're Canada. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to tell my dad that you like it, it helped me a lot. <laughs> also back there at the table, all of the jewelry that you see is handmade. I make it with my very own hands. I've been doing that for years and years. Years, um, and years. I make necklaces, earrings, and bracelets, and I have genuine turquoise from Arizona. So it's the real deal. I get it directly from a wholesaler, so I can give you guys a good deal on it, because turquoise is not as expensive as everyone wants you to think. So, <laughs> fun fact. <laughs> great transition, baby. Well, I have a bunch of window stickers back there. Lots of different great sayings on there. I have one that says, God is good. I have one that says, God answers an email, which is the cutest thing ever. Right. I also have one that says love anchors the soul and it has like an infinity loop with an anchor with a heart inside the eye of the anchor so 
lots going on in that design. But anyway, I have those back there. Um, a, a friend of mine bought one of my God is Good stickers, and he was telling me how when he first put it on, people were honking at him all the time, and he didn't figure out like what happened, like if he just forgot how to drive suddenly or what. And he said that he would start to look in the windows at people, and he noticed they were like smiling at him or giving him a thumbs up, and he realized that they were complimenting his sticker. So if you go back and buy a sticker, and you're out on the road, and someone honks at you, just be sure your reaction is appropriate, <laughs> as if you were treating someone that just complimented your sticker about Jesus. Okay, so we're gonna do just a real, real barn burning tune here, real fast number, because we like to do that, and then we're gonna turn it back over to the pastor. But anyway, thank you guys so much for letting us come out this Sunday morning, and thanks for coming and spending your morning with us. We love you guys. And we're going to do this song. <laughs> I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then the light from heaven filled my soul. He made my heart. amazing almighty God and for that we thank you thank you for the good spirit of our brothers and sisters and pray Lord that you would help them along their way and we'll give you thanks in Jesus name amen and amen, amen. amen.